let's take a look at the implementation of the binary search using Python. So we have a function to implement the binary search and the function consists of the while loop. Hello everyone, welcome to the final session of the Python data structure series. In this session, we will discuss a few sorting and searching algorithms and implement them using Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, we're going to start with sorting algorithms like bubble sort, quick sort, selection sort, etc. And sum up this session with the linear and binary search algorithms with their implementation using Python. I hope the agenda is clear to you. So without any further ado, let's begin. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get latest updates from IntelliPath. Sorting algorithms are used to rearrange a given list or an array according to the comparison operator. In our examples, we will see how we can sort the array or a list in ascending and descending order. So to start with, let's discuss bubble sort. So we follow the following steps to implement the bubble sort algorithm. The process starts with comparing the first element from the list to the next element. If the element is smaller or greater than the first element, we swap the two elements. We repeat this process until the end of the list or the sequence and the sorting process will end when all the elements have been sorted and placed at their appropriate positions. So let's take a look at how we implement the bubble sort using Python. So we have created a function to implement the bubble sort. It takes the array or a list as the input parameter over here that we have created just now and we are using the nested loop to implement the bubble sort. Here, the outer loop is going to implement each step for the bubble sort and the inner loop will compare the elements until the last unsorted elements in the list. If the elements consorts to the given expression that is smaller or greater, then they are swapped and the array is returned at the end of the entire process. So we are starting the outer loop with the range 0 and length of the array which means that it will sort the entire array until the end and for the inner loop we have the range 0 to length of array minus i minus 1 because with each step we want to place the element that is going to be swapped at the end of the unsorted list. So this is the code where we are swapping the element and we are just returning the array in the end. So when I run this I am getting the sorted array over here in the output which is 9, 12, 14, 16, 20, 25, 45 and 60. Now that we are done with the bubble sort, let's take a look at the selection sort algorithm. We follow the following steps to implement the selection sort algorithm. First of all, we have to take the first element and we set it as minimum. We compare the minimum value with each element in the list. If it is smaller than minimum or greater than minimum, we swap the minimum value with the greater element. After each iteration, the minimum value is placed at the start of the unsorted list. And we repeat the process until all the elements are placed at their appropriate positions. So in the first iteration, let's say 20 is the minimum element. It is going to start comparing with the second elements onward. And if the value is greater or less than according to our comparison operator, if it is less or greater, we are going to swap the minimum value and go until the end of the list. After that, when we reach the end of the list, we swap the minimum value and put it at the front of our sorted list and we do this iterations until all the elements are sorted. So now let's take a look at how we implement selection sort in Python. So we have a nested for loop in which the inner loop is checking the elements against the entire list or sequence and the outer loop then places the minimum value at the starting of the unsorted list. So the outer loop is starting for the length of the array, the minimum element is i for instance and then we enter the in inner loop where we are checking if the value is greater than the minimum or not or we are basically checking if it's, it is lesser than the minimum value or not and if it is we swap those elements or basically swap the minimum element. After this we place the element or basically we replace the minimum element with the first index that is going to be our sorted list. The function then returns the sorted array in ascending or descending order according to the operator that we have over here. So when I run this, we are going to get the sorted array in ascending order. But if I change the comparison operator over here to greater than, then we will get the sorted array in descending order. So we'll just wait for this to run. So when I run this, I am getting the output as the sorted array in ascending order. Now when I change the comparison operator over here, let's say we make it as greater than, then the sorted array will become in descending order. 
so that is how we have implemented the selection sort to get the sorted array in descending order same we can do for uh, bubble sort again so if i change the comparison operator over here then we are getting the sorted array in descending order so that is how we easily can uh, implement the bubble sort and the selection sort and now that we are done with the selection sort again let's take a look at the quick sort algorithm so in the quick sort a pivot element is decided and the entire list or sequence is divided into two subarrays which is left and right we compare the elements with the pivot elements and subarrays are divided accordingly the pivot elements are then used to compare each subarray this process is continued until all the subarrays are divided into single elements and then the sorted elements are combined together to form the sorted array let's now take a look at how we implement this using python for the quick sort we have created a function to implement the quick sort and the position of the pivot element is already decided this is the pivot element which we are keeping it as zero the for loop will iterate over the sequence and check with respect to the pivot element and then place the pivot elements to divide the array into left and right subarrays the position of the pivot element is then swapped with the element to start computing on the subarrays so this is where we swap the position of the pivot element and then we have uh, used recursion over here to do the same on left and right subarrays so we are doing this until the elements or the number of elements become one and the function then returns the sorted array which is nothing but the com combination of the left the position and the right subarray so let's just run this and this is how easily we can implement the quick sort using python if you guys have any questions regarding this you can mention them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to help you in your queries moving on let's talk about merge sort so we basically follow these steps to implement the merge sort algorithm first of all to implement the merge sort we follow the divide and conquer method so the array is basically divided into two subarrays from the middle until the base case is reached and the base case is until we have got one element as the resulting subarray just a quick info guys if you want to make a career in software engineering then intellipad provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by enict council of iit guwahati and it is taught by iit guwahati professors and industry experts this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job now let's continue with the session then after all the computations when we have reached the last base case we combine the subarrays to form the sorted array now to combine the subarrays we check the left element of the subarray to that of the right and uh, place them accordingly in the resulting array now just to check how we implement this using python we have created a function to implement the merge sort first of all we have created a base case and that is if the length of the element consort to the expression then we execute or the then the execution enters the function after this we have the left and the right subarray where we have the floor division Uh, to get the exact number of uh, length over there and then we are using the recursion for left and right subarrays so that we reach the base case after this we have used the while loops to combine the elements of the subarrays into the resulting array with the indexes k so here we have the while loops and the recursion technique is used to keep dividing the subarrays until they reach the base case and finally the function returns the resulting sorted arrays so in the while loop you can see so we are checking the left element with the right element and if it is less than that uh, we are putting it inside our uh, array and we are checking it or if it, it does not conform to the expression that we have given over there if it is just single element we just putting it inside the array element with the index k so we let's just run this now we are getting the sorted array in ascending order let's just say if we change this comparison operator what happens we get the resultant array or the array is sorted in descending order same we can do for uh, a quick sort also so here what we'll do is uh, we'll just change the comparison operator over here and we get the resultant as a sorted array in descending order and now that we are done with the merge sort also let's just quickly go over how insertion sort works so insertion sort is a little bit trickier than the other ones that we have discussed to implement the insertion sort we assume that the first element is sorted and place the second element in a separate key so 14 here is going to be the key for us and then what we do is if the key is smaller than the next element or the first element we will place the key in front of the first element and move to the next element and place it in the key so if 40 is less than 20 we will place 
in front of 20 and the key will be shifted towards 25. So we will assume that the first two elements have been already sorted. Now we check with 25. 25 is the key and we check the elements 20 and 14. So if it is greater than 20 or greater than 14, we will move it accordingly. So that is how we sort our array using the insertion sort. And we will repeat this process until the end of the sequence is reached and the array is sorted. Now let's just take a look at how we will implement the insertion sort using Python. Now to implement this, we have created a function over here again. And we have to keep two things in mind. The key basically what, what we are going to use to compare the values and how we are going to compare it with the elements. To do that, we are using a nested for while loop and the for loop takes care of the key sequence and uh, the while loop takes care of comparing the values with the sorted elements and placing them accordingly. So as you can see over here, key is the first index over there. First is starting from the first instead of zero so that uh, we are assuming the first index value at the first index is basically sorted and we are moving towards the second element in the array. Now while j is greater than 0 and array of uh, j is greater than key, we are swapping the values over there. So that is how we create a function to get the insertion sort and now when I run this, we get the same and now that I run this, I am getting the sorted array as the result and if again I change uh, the comparison operators, I will get this in uh, descending order. So we are done with the sorting algorithms. We will after this take a look at how we implement the linear search and binary search in Python. So searching algorithms are used to locate an element in an array or a list. And to start with, let's just take a look at how linear search and uh, basically how it works. So we have to follow the following steps to implement the linear search. And to implement the linear search, we have to compare it against each value of the array. So we will compare the element to be found against each value inside the array. If the value is equal to the element, we will return true. So if you have followed the other sessions that we have done uh, for this data structure series, we have done the linear search for a lot of other data structures like linked list. We have done it for almost all the data structures. We, we have performed the linear search over there. And here also we have uh, implemented a function over here where we have two parameters, array and the element that has to be found. Now what we're doing is inside this, we have a for loop where we are iterating over the entire array and we are just checking uh, for each iteration if the value is equal to the desired value or not. If it is equal to that, we are returning true. And that is how, if let's say we want to search 9 inside our array, it is returning true. So we can do that for any other values also. So this is rather an easier approach to find elements in linear data structures. And uh, now after this, let's also go through how binary search works and how we can implement it using Python. So we have to follow the following steps to implement the binary search. To implement the binary search, uh, we can follow either the iterative approach or the recursive approach. And most importantly, the search take place in a sorted array. So we have to make sure that the array is sorted. So in the diagram over here, this is exactly not a sorted array. So in order to move forward with this, you have to make sure the array is sorted. Now after this, the array is divided into low, mid and high, which is basically uh, the lowest, highest and the middle positions inside the array. And if the element uh, to be found is the middle element, we return the middle element. Otherwise, if the element is less than mid, we search it in the left sub array. And if it is uh, greater than the mid, we search it in the right sub array. Since we already know it's sorted, we have a very high chance of finding it out in the sub arrays. And we repeat the process until low meets high. So that is how we perform the binary search. Let's take a look at the implementation of the binary search using Python. So we have a function to implement the binary search and the function consists of the while loop that will execute until low becomes high. And the conditional expressions check for the elements to be searched if not found will enter the sub arrays while low will be decided accordingly. And the loop will execute until the base case is met. If the element is found, it will return true or if not found, the function will return false. So here we have the low value set to zero, which is the starting index and high is length of array minus one, which is the ending index. And then we have a temporary variable, which is false. Now, while in the loop, we check the expressions, loop will keep on executing until low is uh, less than or equal to high, which is if low becomes high and not temp. After this, we have the middle value, which we are uh, getting by a floor division of low plus high. And then uh, there are a few expressions. So we are checking if the middle value or the index at the middle is equal to the desired value or not. If it is, we are changing the temporary variable to true 
and if it is not equal to that we are entering another expression where if we are checking if the element is less than the array of the middle we change the high or the last index to middle minus one and if it is uh, greater than the array of the middle we are changing the low to middle plus one and we are returning the temporary variable now let's just say if we can search in the array the element zero so we, when we do that we are getting the value as true now let's check it for 11 which is not in our array so it will return false so that is how easily we can uh, implement the binary search and now that we have come to the end of the session don't forget to like share and subscribe to intellipad and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from intellipad Stay tuned for more such series in various technologies to make your learning experience better than ever. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in software engineering, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by ENICT Council of IIT Guwahati. And it is taught by IIT Guwahati professors and industry experts. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.